Okay, our next reader, Jane Davis, moved home with her horse Snickers and dog Bocce after 50 years away. The last 20 were in New Mexico, where she lived on her 30-acre off-the-grid ranch. She now boards dogs and does equine-assisted healing with humans. Jane Davis. When I was a little girl, I was nicknamed Mrs. Malaprop, a literary character that always mixed up her words. I used to go around singing, Ooh, Melvin, which really turned out to be Blue Velvet. <laughs> I still unintentionally mix up my words malapropisms, as defined by the dictionary, funk and wagnalls that some of you may remember. I love my malapropisms, except one time. I was one of the top salespeople in an advertising company in New York City. If you're familiar with the show Mad Men, I was living that. While it depicted advertising in the 60s, there wasn't much change in the 80s. Alcohol, sex, drugs, and money. Oh yes, we were driven by the dollar. And I latched on, having switched careers from social work to advertising. When I first moved to New York City after grad school, I got a job in my career. I was going to housing projects, trying not to step and piss or get raped in the elevators, while friends were and advertising going to the 21 Club. Something's wrong with this picture, I thought. One day, I just quit my job. Paul Stewart, an exclusive men's clothing store on Madison Avenue, was hiring for their new women's department. I decided that if I could get hired in the men's department, I would be discovered like Lana Turner in the drugstore. I was offered a job in the women's department, but with my natural sales skills, convinced them to hire me in the men's department where I became the first woman hired there. Months later, one of my customers asked me, what are you doing working here? After an interview, I was hired as a salesperson in my first advertising job. I rose to the number one salesperson position and eventually to president of a division of the company. One day, John, the corporate president was hawking me about my team's numbers. I was so aggravated because I knew we were far beyond our, our projections. As he persisted, I ran to my office, grabbed my sales sheet, ran back to his office, and threw it on his desk. I have no idea why that old dictionary popped into my head, but in that moment, I yelled, stick that up your fucking Wagnall. <laughs> oh my God, that's not what I meant. I screamed silently, but it really was. 